Here we are in the Accident Investigation Laboratory at Cranfield University, and one of the questions that is frequently asked following an aircraft accident is what are the black boxes and what do they do? Well, in front of me are a range of, of flight data recorders and cockpit voice recorders, and these are known as black boxes, even though, as you can see, they're painted bright orange. They're painted bright orange so you can find them on an accident site. The units, there are two types, there's a flight data recorder and a cockpit voice recorder and they are both located normally in the tail of the aircraft where the, the, there is a lot of structure and uh, they stand more chance of surviving impact. In front of me here is a flight data recorder. This is a, a tape-based flight data recorder. These, uh, there are some of these still flying around on aeroplanes today, um, but they have, have been superseded now by uh, flight recorders that record onto solid state memory. On the front uh, of the recorder, there's an underwater locator beacon. This is a beacon that as soon as the unit's immersed in any kind of fluid, it will start sending out a sonar ping. And this is, can be helpful, this can be used to, to find the aircraft or find the recorder if the aircraft has had an accident at sea. The recorders themselves are very robust. Uh, they can take uh, a deceleration of, of 3,400 G over six and a half milliseconds. To put that into context, that's the equivalent of going from 70 miles an hour to zero miles an hour in your car in the space of just one and a half centimeters. They can take 1,100 degrees centigrade for an hour, or they could take a smoldering fire of 260 degrees centigrade for 10 hours. So very, very robust units, and they do tend to survive uh, most accidents. Most of this part that you can see on the outside is expendable. It's, uh, it, it can come away. It's not actually crash protected. Um, but there is a module inside um, which is crash protected. As you can see, a very solid unit um, made out of, of very high impact resistant materials. Uh, and that is the bit that is designed to survive the, the, the crash. And this contains the, uh, the, in this case, the tape that the data is recorded onto. And this is the part that really weighs uh, the, the, the bulk of the weight of the, the unit. This is recording things like not only height, uh, speed, what the aircraft's actually doing in terms of pitch, roll and yaw. Um, it's also recording things like what the seatbelts were doing, perhaps even uh, things like what the temperatures were in the passenger compartments and, and in the baggage compartments as well. So a huge amount of data. A box like this uh, will be recording for 25 hours and it works on a continuous loop. Once 25 hours has been recorded, it starts rewriting over the old data. As well as the flight data recorder, there's a cockpit voice recorder. A cockpit voice recorder looks very similar, recording onto normally solid state memory nowadays. Uh, and that records from different microphones uh, on the flight deck. So it will record what the pilots are talking about, it will record what pilots are talking to our traffic control about, and it will record area sounds, so ambient sounds in the flight deck. And that information can be really helpful for investigators to understand what went on. The limitations of these units is that they tell us a lot about what was happening to the aeroplane, but they don't actually tell us what was in the minds of the pilots or what the weather was doing, for example. So the investigators have to piece this analysis, this evidence, together with all the other evidence they have to build up a picture of exactly what happened. So whenever there's an aircraft accident, a priority for the investigators is to find these recorders. They're a fantastic source of evidence, but they don't always tell the whole picture. But without them, the accident investigator's job is a whole lot harder.